In today's video, we have yet another PlayStation 5 update to go over. The 3D audio is said to be a big step forward for game audio and will enable richer experiences that's coming directly from a developer. So we'll highlight all of that, and in one of the bigger leaks in recent memory, the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo introduction scene has been leaked, and the entire playthrough has been leaked. It seems like this demo will be coming soon, and we've got some details on it, including the file size for it, and it is going to be a sizable download given the fact that it is just a demo. So we'll go over that, and also Yuji Hori is noting that as far as Dragon Quest XII goes, another major JRPG, it's still a while ahead, so don't be expecting that for quite a while, we'll talk that at the end of this video. But first up, been really enjoying covering all of the PlayStation 5's little tidbits that have been coming out, of course CES is just a few days away, and we'll get hopefully a sizable info drop then, and I imagine throughout the latter portion of the first half of 2020, we'll get even more and more info on the PS5. However, as far as audio was concerned that was never really was considered as important to games as the visuals component as a result hardware manufacturers often focus on enhancing the capabilities of say the graphics card while audio components didn't really get any major upgrades or anything that notable over the course of the various different console generations this is apparently changing with sony's playstation 5 however due to launch globally in less than a year from now and playstation 5 lead system architect mark cerny told wired as much during the first spec reveal. Noting, quote, as a gamer, it's been a little bit of a frustration that audio did not change too much between PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. With the next console, the dream is to show how dramatically different the audio experience can be when we apply significant amounts of hardware horsepower to it. Now, a few developers have commented on this as well in a new interview with Games Radar. For instance, Samuel Justice, previously an audio director and designer for the Chinese Room, Dice and Frictional Games, co-founder and supervising sound designer of Sweet Justice Sound, a company behind the sound in Fortnite, Half-Life Alex, Mortal Kombat 11, and among other major titles, noting, quote, I think the raw computing power needed to create realistic audio models is largely overlooked. In the past, we have managed to create fairly good representations of acoustic modeling through a lot of trickery and clever techniques. The ability to fully realize automated 3D audio is a big step forward for game audio and will certainly result in much richer experiences. Ray tracing is another element that could also actually improve audio, according to Marcus Klein, lead sound designer at Zoink games who have done FE and Ghost Giant noting, quote, it can be used to improve the sense of realism by more accurate adjustments to the audio depending on the environment surrounding the player in real time. It'll be interesting how all of this comes together and if this is something that'll actually be appreciated by the consumer. Again, we haven't really seen those audio improvements generationally, so if the PlayStation 5 is getting a substantial leap from the audio department, maybe that's something that'll be noticeable right away and maybe us actually experiencing better audio like this will give us a bigger appreciation for what audio adds to games. It definitely adds a layer to games, but it's not as noticeable as, say, visuals. Right away, when you make a generational leap, the visual upgrade is obvious, and that's what the majority of resources is seemingly put into uh, to make the best visuals possible, because at the end of the day, that is the promotional tool. For a console, the visuals are the promotional tool for a brand new console to sell that, especially to a casual consumer. For a lot of other people, maybe you don't care about visuals, but for a lot of casual consumers, I do think visuals are a big part of it and it's easy to see why these publishers developers manufacturers have put so much emphasis in visuals but audio does add a significant layer to game presentation as well so it's nice to see that the playstation 5 is going to be making strides in that department as well we'll see how that comes together over the course of the few months and ultimately when the playstation 5 releases in holiday 2020 all right moving on from that how about one of the strangest leaks in recent memory the entirety of the final fantasy 7 remake demo has been leaked online initially the introduction scene leaked and now the entire playthrough of the demo has been leaked this is around 45 minutes to an hour long so it's a pretty reasonable demo the demo is not out yet However, the introduction scene for the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo has leaked online. A link to the file server hosting the demo among files for various other games, the PlayStation Store listing of which leaked, leaked last week. That was posted on Twitter, and now a YouTube user, Listraza, was able to install and run the demo, likely on a jailbroken PlayStation 4. The full game was reportedly also listed in the same file server, but has already been removed. How insane is that the full game was reportedly listed? That is ridiculous. Of course, the game is due out March 3rd, 2020 so still a few months away but at this point the game is finishing up and it'll probably go gold in the next two to three weeks 
And again, the entirety of the demo has leaked online. Also, for those of you looking to download the demo when and if it does come out, I think it's more of a when than if. It will be a hefty 22.54 gigabyte install. So that is a reasonable install for a demo. And man, that gets me questioning on how big this game is going to be. This demo is only the first hour or so of the game. Obviously, it's not like the game is going to be 20 times the size of that. But I could easily see the FF7 remake being, you know, a 100 gigabyte game. That wouldn't shock me at all, especially if they are going to be updating the game, if they plan on releasing DLC, which I don't think they are, but obviously it bears to be reiterated, the game will be a multi-parted experience, and you will have to buy the game two to three times, well, you'll have to buy the remake a couple times for the entirety of the Final Fantasy VII experience, that hasn't been covered enough by Square Enix, but I feel like it's my job to make sure everybody is abundantly aware of that fact, but nonetheless, hopefully the demo will be out this month on the PlayStation 4, uh, you wouldn't want to be releasing the demo, you know, next month or even after the game releases. After the game releases and then releasing a demo just doesn't make any sense. You want to use this demo as a promotional tool, get people invested into everything that this has to offer, get people hooked on the characters, the story, if you can do that within the first hour, really sell people on the gameplay as well because the gameplay is a little bit different if you do want to go the action-oriented route. And there is that audience of people that have heard about Final Fantasy VII. They understand how iconic of a game it is, but let's be real, Final Fantasy VII came out all the way back in 1997. I know that it's had a plethora of re-releases, but how many people really want to play through a re-release of a game that released initially in 97, especially with the visuals that it did have? A lot of people are going to be experiencing Final Fantasy VII for the first time on March 3rd, and if you want to sell them a little bit on the game, I know it's not going to be that hard of a sell, but a demo would be a great idea. Again, the full game will be out on March 3rd, Again, the full game will be out on March 3rd, and it is shaping up to be the biggest game of the early 2020 portion. Honestly, it's a contender up there because there are so many heavy hitters. Cyberpunk 2077 is out in April. You've got The Last of Us Part 2 out in May, and hey, for JRPG fans, you've got Persona 5 Royal in March as well. So a lot of good stuff is coming out in the next few months, and Final Fantasy VII Remake really kicks off that wave of big budget titles. There's going to be a couple of other major titles coming out before March 3rd, but as far as these huge, huge games. Final Fantasy VII Remake is really going to kick things off. And lastly, I do want to note that Yuji Horii noted that Dragon Quest XII is still a little while ahead. A New Year's message from the creator of Dragon's Quest... And he posted a New Year's card and message on Twitter where he looks back on the series releases and announcements from 2019 as well as references Dragon Quest XII. Here is the entirety of the message. Happy New Year. In addition to what I said in the New Year's card below, there are some things I still cannot say, but as far as Dragon Quest XII, it's still a little while ahead. However, there may be things we can release before that. Please give me your support again this year. So Dragon Quest XII is still a while away, but it looks like they are open to releasing other games in the Dragon Quest franchise. I think that goes without saying. I think a couple of remakes, I think a couple of ports of the games that were, say, released on the Nintendo DS, that wouldn't be a bad idea at all. And he noted, Happy New Year, last year we released the Dragon Quest movie, Dragon Quest Your Story, as well as the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI. We also released Dragon Quest Walk for Smartphones and announced anime and game adaptations for Dragon Quest The Adventures of Dai. And now, 33 years after the first game, I am extremely happy to be able to challenge new things, such as the production of Dragon Quest XII, to all the fans who have supported Dragon Quest thus far, as well as many staff who have sustained it. Thank you so much. While I'm not sure how long I'll be able to keep this up, I want to work as hard as I can for a little while longer. Longer. May this year be a wonderful one for everyone. Please give me your support again this year. So obviously, 33 years working on the same franchise might get a little bit redundant, but Yuji Horii has stayed incredibly motivated in regards to Dragon Quest, and I feel like the Dragon Quest franchise is just peaking now. It seems the franchise now has a lot more attention surrounding it than it has in the past, and that's good because the series is doing rather well. The games have been compelling, and I think Dragon Quest 12 could be great. I think if they want to release other games, they're obviously working on The Adventure of Die and Anime to go along with that. We'll see how that turns out, but a lot of cool stuff coming in terms of Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest 12 probably will be a PlayStation 5 game, but we probably won't see it for quite a while. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, the PlayStation 5's 3D audio is said to be a big step forward for game audio and will enable richer experiences and more realistic experiences, also coupled with ray tracing. Final Fantasy VII Remake demo has been leaked online. An entire playthrough is leaked. Hopefully, that'll be coming officially to the PlayStation Store rather soon. And Yuji Horii noted that Dragon Quest 12 is still a little while ahead, so that game is a ways away, but other Dragon Quest experiences will be coming. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. 
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.